Today's video is brought to you by Wood Defender. Hey, we're gonna watch a little video here and see what we think about this. That was a terrible intro. We're doing this fence and we got the last picket and you just don't want to put one picket up and have a one inch rip. So I learned this trick from my good friend, James Zilla. You put two pickets up like this, go ahead and get that space covered in pretty nice. Put a nail in the center. Now right there. Do you know what he's doing? I do. I know what he's doing. Let's you don't know on. what he's doing? Have nope. you not been to Florida? This is called, this is what we call the Westbrook rip is what Sean King calls this. It's not something new to James Zilla, but I went almost my whole life without knowing this, so now you can learn too. I, I learned this, I learned this, what, yeah, a year and a half ago. We're gonna measure the full length of that, a seven and a half. We're gonna find center, uh, three and three, and three, three quarters. quarters. There you go. So, huh? so we're gonna do a little bit of wind, probably get more right there. Now, we're gonna take a chalk line. Right there. Snap a line. So the thing with this, you don't even have to chalk line it. If you can somewhat freehand a straightish cut, that'll work too. You don't even have to chalk line that. You Everybody know? I've ever seen do this just does it freehand. There's not even a tape measure. It's just basically trying to get your blade between the center of the two boards where they overlap in the, that center portion. Another very important note, if you do want a chalk line, always use red. I'm kidding. Don't use red. It's, it's forever. It's like the diamond of chalk. Every time I see red, I think about that fence on the way to our shop on uh, oh, yeah, yeah, on Watson yeah, yeah. Road, and they chalk-lined all the screws with red, and it's still there. I mean, it, it'll never, ever wash off. It's permanent. <laughs> Do not use red. It's perfect. There you go. The other thing you can do after you rip it is if you need to, you can go and re-dog gear your corners on your picket. That really depends on how wide your pieces are. I think I think the rule, like he's right at that threshold, like three and a half inches, I'm probably going to re-dog gear it. Well, I'm definitely not going to dog gear it under three inches. We're basically just going to let the dog gear on the right and left stand. The middle will just be straight and it, that seam is perfect. Hey guys, we hope you guys are enjoying today's video. We wanted to drop in and tell you a thing or two about today's sponsor, Wood Defender. We love these guys. They have a great product. Wood Defender is oil-based, so therefore you're not gonna have any chipping, cracking, or flaking of your fence stain. Wood Defender is self-leveling. If you cover your fence to the point of saturation, you're not gonna be able to see a heavier spot and a lighter spot. Also, if you start and stop, you're not gonna see any stitch lines. You are gonna have some drips, you're gonna have some runs, but you're not gonna see them because it's self-leveling. I don't wanna go out there with a paintbrush and stain my fence. No, no, you're thinking the wrong thing. Wood Defender is so easy to apply. Pick up a simple weed sprayer and away you go, spraying down your fence. Now what about overspray? Is that difficult to clean off? Wood Defender is super easy to clean up off of non-porous surfaces. Just take a dry rag, maybe some dish soap and water, and wipe it right off. On porous surfaces, it takes just a little extra prep work with either a drop cloth, some dish soap, and some water. Wood Defender has been family owned since 1952, and they have amazing customer service to match. Wood Defender has dealers in every state who can ship anywhere just like us. Make sure and see the link below. And now, back to the video. Now, the other really cool thing about this is is even if you have a crooked cut, it won't matter because you'll never see it. It matches up perfectly. But they're mirror images of each yeah, other. Yeah, they're basically mirror images. So that's why the chalk line isn't as important because if you do it right, even when your cut's crooked or maybe you have an S cut, it'll still match up perfectly. And we'll probably go ahead and put our little dog ears on it and you won't be able to tell where it's at. I agree with that. I think that there's enough there to re-dog ear it without it looking funny. Mm -hmm. If you re-dog ear a board that's too small, it just looks goofy. Agreed. I think three and a half is about that line, too. About three and a half inches wide. Yeah, that's 100% legit. That's the way to do it. I don't know. It gets a thumbs up for me. That's the way we do it in Florida. I say thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. You get three thumbs up for this method. Nice job. Well, I think that's it for this video. I'm Alan with SWI. Alan's sleeping, and that was about the most pathetic exit from a video that I've ever seen. I'm Mark with SWI. Can you do it? Well, that's it for this video. <laughs> I'm Alan with SWI. I'm Dan There's this it. retard, Dan, and we don't even care about this one. You have a good dang day. <laughs> All right, that was better.